Right, back to us. And you'll notice we've lost our presence here, so we're stuck on this little continental island up here, which means if we populate, we're not going to be able to go very far. But these two blue cubes do mean I could populate quite quickly. That's, <laughs> that's worked out really badly for us. They've pushed us off here. We, we can't get back um, unless we can fly or something like that. All right, let's refresh because that's the end of Queen Bee's turn. There's no event section here, so events are avoided. But I'm not very happy about that. Turn of events, we might have to start getting a little bit nasty. There aren't any flyers out here in terms of those. There are swimmers, but there might be an opportunity to show you something else. I'm going to mutate the game. We are vulnerable, but there's none of their species up here with us. So we kind of do have a little bit of isolation to work with. But we've got to find a way to get back and spread around off this lonely little island. And this might be a mutation to help us. Dermal light sense. It brings a red cube, a red organ. And then if I promote it, another blue, which is good, but potentially another white or a white instead. And that could help us. Okay, I'm going to take this one. So I'm going to mutate. All right, we take a red cube. Let's not forget our cubes this time. And we've got our mutation. All right, back to them. Now, this is one thing about this game. All right, it's a bit of a simulation. And you know, your actions are short. And doing the Queen Bee, the AI actions tend to be a little bit longer, which is a downside. But if you're happy to just, you know, follow the simulation, see how things unfold unfold is that kind of game let's refresh all right all right we do have an event right we have um our viking selenium famine this number here means if you're playing four player you ignore this event but we're not we're playing solo or two player if you like then we've got a fossil award this time the fossil award goes to the player with the most pheromones. Now a pheromone would be like a completed, um, let's take this as an example. Yeah. Um, let's say they put this on here like this. Do you see how the red pheromone is now completed, right? Two halves come together to create a completed pheromone. In the moment, nobody has a completed pheromone. No points here, right? They've got half, half, nothing over here for me. The next event is a mutagen event. We roll the dice, and the number of dice we roll depends what mode of the game we're playing. Remember I said we were using four D6, so we're rolling four dice. And we take the highest number of that D8. That becomes the maximum number of organs that your species can have. And if you have more than that, then you have to start culling those organs. So for example, I've got this species, I've got one, two, three, I've got three organs, all right? So if the limit was two, I'd have to get rid of one. So I'd potentially I'd have to lose that mutation to get it down to two, all right? We should be okay with four dice. Um, I've got three, they've got three up here. Yeah, we should be okay. Take the highest. <laughs> Wow, take the highest number, the highest number is six. All right, ignore the others. So you can see the more dice you play with, I mean, you could go down to just rolling one die, but then it's a little bit wilder because you know you, you could start losing more species, losing mutations and organs. With four dice, it's a little bit more st stable, right? So the more dice you play with, the more stable. That's called the ticket setting. So we've got four dice, that's our ticket setting, more stability. All right, six. Six is the maximum number of organs. Three, two, three. Everyone's okay. Push on. We can ignore that event. All right, nothing happened. Uh, back to them. So they're going to roll a die. They've got two species. So roll of one or two, they won't speciate. Three or higher, they're going to speciate. They rolled a four. All right, so they're going to speciate. First, find 
the phasing species. The phasing species is the one with the most unborn. Uh, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six. So this is their phasing species. So whatever they're going to speciate, they're going to speciate from here. Let's make sure they have a viable mother. They've got three here. The most stressed is this one. So that's going to be their viable mother. So they can speciate from here. They, this is grassland, so they won't use a swimmer. And there's also a species called a parasite. A parasite needs a host, and that means there needs to be another creeple here of another colour, another player. Right? A parasite will live off another player's creeples. So we'll ignore swimmers, so it's not in swamps or lakes, and we'll ignore parasites. So let's have a look at the market. So there's a parasite here, so we'll ignore that. There's a swimmer here, so we'll ignore that. There are two um, armoured hit here, but we've already got the armoured. You can't create that again. Nothing here. Right, there's a flyer here. So that's the one they're taking. There is a flyer here. A swimmer here. Right, so they're going to mutate and take this one on their phasing species, which is the top one. Okay, that's a yellow cube. So they're a pollinator. Instant promotion. Okay, so this goes on here, this gets promoted, flip, find a side, remember they can't do swimmers because we're not in lakes or swamps, so they're going to promote the flying species with this allery muscles, okay, so they're going to create a new species, just move these up out of the way, we do want a, quite a bit of table space for this one, but, um, here we go, here's the next new species card, for the flyers, seven flyer meeples. We're going to take one of them because there's going to be a sacrificial mother. I remember it's this one. Okay, so that one gets sacrificed back to the archetype. And um, you need to keep these in order, okay, because we need to remember which is, uh, they kind of go from top to bottom. They inherit their basal organs, which is uh, a yellow and two greens, okay, yellow and two greens. So these are very efficient right now at gathering food. Now you'll notice that they have a yellow cube that makes them a pollinator. When you place a creeple on a biome, and it happens during speciation as well as when you're populating, if the queen bee has more yellow cubes than any of our species, then they will choose to become a pollinator in that biome. And what that means is we take one of these flowers and we overlay it. So now when we compete in this environment, instead of competing for, with green cubes, we're going to be competing with yellow cubes. Right now they populate with their new species. Remember it's number of blue cubes plus one. They don't have any blue cubes so it's just one. They can't go on lakes. So they're looking for an adjacent environment. It's a flyer so it can feed on archetypals or other flyers. So it can't go here. It won't go in here and try and compete with itself. All right. But it can feed on archetypes, so it's just going to go straight in as a carnivore in one of these two spots. Remember, it goes for the least stressful spot first, and this has got elevation 1, this has got elevation 0. So it's going to go in here as a carnivore and populate here. It hasn't gone into a herbivore spot, so it's not going to turn this yellow. Okay, cool. I think her points have gone up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Plus one fossil, yeah, she's on seven. Right, let's refresh the market here. Is there another event? No, there's not. Okay, I want to do some promoting now. I want to get my species stronger and then probably try and populate a little bit. But I want to get some basal organs down here so that when I speciate, I've got at least inheriting some stuff. I still feel a little bit safe because I'm off here on this little continent on my own. But let's see what we can do. Let's promote something. Dermal light sense. Let's promote this, that's our action. So this becomes a basal organ. We flip and we can choose to put heat sensors on, which will give us a thorax with a blue cube. 
or circadian clock, which is a head with a white cube. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Periodical cicadas to emerge every 13 or 17 years. Such precision is achieved with dermal light sensing coupled with a biochemical oscillator. Wow, so we've kind of got this um, cicada now. And we put a white cube on here. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right, back to them. So figure out their phasing species. Which one has the most unborn? It's their archetype species once more. And they're going to do their speciation role. One, two, or three. They've got three species. One, two, or three, they're not going to speciate higher than that, and they will. They rolled a one, so they're not going to speciate this time. So what do they do instead? Well, if they don't speciate, they instead look to do their second reaction, which is to mutate. Um, if they use so short, if they have a head, a thorax and a tail or an abdomen, they skip that, but they don't. You know, they've just got a, a thorax at the moment. And they're going to try and promote the cheapest cards that adds to their portraits. Now, this is interesting because to add to their portraits, if they place a portrait or a body part to the left, it needs to have a blue half of the pheromone. And if they place the tail to the right, it needs to have a blue part of the pheromone. So looking at something with blue on it, they don't care what it is, as long as it's in the cheapest spot. And it just happens to be one right here. It is metal reinforced cuticles. It's got a blue tail. So they're taking this. It brings a yellow cube, a red, yellow organ. So they're going to mutate this. They're going to put a yellow organ on it. They've got instant promotion. So they're going to promote instantly. There's no choice because that red doesn't fit anywhere, but the blue tail does, and the blue abdomen. So that's going on here, and they've completed a pheromone, and it brings another blue cube. Okay, so they've got metal tipped oviposter. Wow. And they've completed a pheromone which gives them another victory point. Okay, so they're at so eight. Right, let's refill the market. That's it, right? They've added they've added a body part. Job done. Right, let's reveal. Oh, we've got an event. So fossil awards, whoever's got the most pheromones. Well they've got one now, right? They've just completed the one, so they're getting another fossil. We've got a mutagen roll. Now they're at risk because they've got one, two, three, four, they've got six there, two, three. I've got one, two, three, four, I'm at risk, but White cubes add two to the maximum number of organs you can have during a mutagen roll. So actually I've got a limit of, of whatever, plus two. So let's roll the four dice. Um, oh, they get their extra point. So they're actually up to nine now, aren't they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they're up to nine. Okay, let's see what the mutagen roll is. It's a seven. So they're okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody's okay. A seven. Uh, this one's got a plus two, so I've got a nine limit on here. All right. So those four dice gives a lot of stability during mutagen rolls. And then we've got craton number two would move. Craton number two is not out here. We've got one, three, six, and five, so that does nothing. All right, back to me. Now you'll notice I can't promote this body part because, let me show you if I do, we've got a red head who's already got a head. Now I could promote this and chuck this, toss this one out. That would replace it because you can only have one head. But I can't put the thorax on either because then yeah, you've got green to blue. That doesn't work either. So that thorax doesn't work. But this one does. I might take this one. This is grooming. And it's got a metapleural gland with got, that moves uh, from green to blue on the thorax. You can have as many thoraxes as you like. But I'm going to take this grooming one. It brings a red organ 
then I'll probably try and promote that next time. All right, let's refill. Oh, another event. So again, fossil to the most pheromones, they've got one. Proton number six is gonna move. Um, let's give them an extra point for the fossil. Here's Croton number six, it's joined. So it's gonna split down its fault line. It's not gonna separate out like so because it brings anyone attached to its mountains with it, which is this crate on here. So it's gonna just push apart like that. Right, there we go. The world is splitting up. Then we've got one more icon, and this one is unfortunate. It will never affect Queen Bee. Um, metabolism radiation. Each species discards all of its unpromoted cards of the specified colors, yellow and red which means we lose the grooming that we just took. <laughs> That's bad. Bad luck. This game is, or can be, tough at times. And I don't think, I mean, this one was perfect for me. I don't think I'm gonna find another one. Uh, you can shield against this radiation. If you've got a completed pheromone, to shield against red or yellow radiation, I'd need a completed red or yellow pheromone. So another great reason for promoting and creating completed pheromones. And likewise, if it was blue-green radiation, then a completed blue or green pheromone would protect you. So that's that shielding. The butterfly game really does try to force you to progress uh, because of these events, it really does. All right, phasing species. Again, most unborn is the, his archetype. Let me roll a one, two, or three. Oops. It's a two, so they're not going to speciate again. And once more, they're going to look to mutate. They can't put a tail on. They can't put this thorax on. Yeah, there's nothing there for them to purchase. So they can't mutate. So they're going to go to their tertiary axon instead, which is populate. Okay. They do have lots of blue cubes. So they've got one, two. So... It's always one plus a number of blue cubes, so three. They're going to populate three of their creeples. They're going to find a mother. And there's only two of them out here on the board. They're going to pick the one which is most stressed, which is the most populous one. They're going to try and find environments they can move into. And they won't move in here because that's cannibalism. They could move into this one, this one, or this one. Now, because it's the archetype species, what they'll do is they'll move in and they'll push the resident herbivore up like that. That's the only time they'll do that. It's when they're moving in with their archetype because remember, they can eat the archetype. So these three are all candidates. They're gonna go for whichever one is the least agrophobic. They're all just got one creeple in them. Which other one has the lowest elevation? This has two, this has one, this has two. So they're gonna go for this one next. So the next daughter will go in here and push that up here. That's all good. Now because they're daisy chaining, they're gonna go from here next. So it's either here or here. Those two are pretty much equal. So it's up to us actually where we want it to go. So let's say it goes, we can make a choice. Let's put it in here. Then they're gonna daisy chain off here. There's nowhere for it to go from here. There's no habitable space. And even if they went this way, they couldn't go here because of cannibalism. They couldn't go here because it's a lake. This one has got nowhere to go. Now what that means is, in the solo game at least, this becomes what's called a zombie. And I place it over here. Now it counts as an unborn for me when it comes to buying cards from the market, but it's effectively kind of out of the game. Unless a mutagen event forces the archetype species to go extinct, this zombie's going to sit here on this card, um, helping me with my budget, not contributing to his unborn. All right. And it's a strange rule, but there it is. So they finished their action, they've just populated. Okay, back to me. No cards bought this time, so again, no events, so we're lucky there. And this has kind of messed me up a little bit, that, um, that event. I was really hoping 
have worked with that a bit better. Now I think I'm going to go for a populate. It's one plus number of blue cubes, so three. So I can populate three daughters. And normally your larva, your daughters, your larval dispersal is to adjacent places, right? Now it goes. You can actually move a number of spaces um, according to number of blue cubes. So remember it's one plus two, so three. They count as what is called dispersal points. I've got three dispersal points. What that means is, if this was joined in here, I'd start at the mother and I can walk one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, and I'll walk away. Crossing mountains costs an extra DP. Okay, so this would be one, cross the mountains, two, three, kind of thing. All right, I can go this way, but. You get the idea. That's dispersal points, how things move around. So I could put one in here. Right? That's one of my larva. But from here and here, I can't go in here. You can't capitalize. These two have got nowhere to go. But if you're flying, or if you've got one or more white cubes, a white cube makes you hollow metabolon, which means insect development goes from egg, larva, pupa, adult. You can kind of throw yourself to the wind and see where it carries you. And hopefully, if luck's on your side, it might carry you to one of these distant continents. So what we can do instead is for each of these, we can make an airborne dispersal roll. The number of dice we roll is the number of white cubes that we have. We have one white cube, so we can roll two dice. That's one for each of those two lava. So we rolled a one and an eight. The eight's no good. There's no crate on here with a number eight on it. So this little guy will be lost at sea and, and killed. But one's okay, we've got a one. Okay, there's crate on number one. So this guy's thrown itself, this poor little juvenile, has thrown itself to the wind and it's been blown to crate on number one. So our little guy's gonna paratroop in here somewhere. We can choose where. If there was an uninhabited biome, that's where they would have to go. But they're all they're all habited, so we're going to have to fight over one of these spots. Now, as it goes, if we tried to enter as a herbivore, we would have a contest of green cubes, and uh, we would lose that contest. So we're going to have to drop in as a carnivore somewhere. Fortunately, all three of these have edible creepers in them for us. And with our one red cube here, that's what these red cubes mean, yeah? So we're competing over red cubes, not green. Any one of these spots will do. It's up to me where I want to go. I might decide to go in the middle here. We're competing over red cubes. We have one of them in the cocoon game. White cubes are wild. In butterfly, they're not. They lose that ability, right? So you're just counting red cubes in contests. It's either red, green, or yellow depending on the type of contest. So we've got one, the flyer here that only has yellow and green. This one's knocked out. Now as it goes, if we knock out one of these guys, it can do what's called a swarm. It can move to an adjacent space if it can and survive. So it would fly over here, move over here, and live as a carnivore in this spot. So what if I went, say here instead, I went here instead and had a carnivore battle. Again, this armoured one hasn't have any red cubes. It's going to get knocked out. Well, now there's nowhere for it to swarm to. So this one would be killed and become a zombie. Another zombie on my card. There you go. Let's do that then. All right. Okay, that was our action. We've managed to get a foothold back here. Let's see if... The bad guys will do anything about it. All right, let's do, uh, which is the phasing? So five here, five here, five here. They've all got five unborn, so they're going to go for whichever is lowest on the roster as their phasing species. They're going to try and phase off this flyer. Will it speciate? So one, two, or three, it won't. Four, five, six, seven, eight, it will. Six, yes, they're going to speciate. So let's choose the prospective mother. It's this one, but could they avoid stillborn? 
Yes, they could because they've got suitable food here. Um, and they're in a swamp as well. It's this one because remember this is the phasing, this the, the phasing species. There's only two out here. This one is the most stressed because it's in the most populated biome. It could do a swimmer because it's in water from a swamp. Um, and it could do any species because it's a carnivore and, and there is food here. The archetype is food for anyone. So that's our sacrificial mother. Let's see now. Uh, cheapest species is this one. It's a swimmer, which is still good. So we mutate. That's the yellow cube. We, let's move this out of the way. Instant promotes. Swimmers come in. with two yellows and two greens. And they replace this one. That goes back, this comes in. That's their species. It can feed, it is carnivore. It's got no blue cubes, but it will populate for one. We take one, it's looking for an adjacent spot where it can live. The only place is here. It's not going to compete with its own. This becomes a zombie. I'm just going to do a quick check on the scores. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven species and three fossils and one completed pheromone. That's 11 points to them. I've got one, two, three on the map, and that's it. So I'm on three points. We're a long way behind. Maybe we can start to do something about this. Now that we've got a foothold here, and we're quite aggressive, with two blue cubes, we can populate again for three. We've got a mother here now. So we could come in, let's say here, Number one, we can't compete as a herbivore, so we're pushed up here. We can compete as a carnivore. We've got one red, they've got none, so this thing is defeated. He would be allowed to swarm, but there's nowhere adjacent for him to go to. So this guy's going to become a zombie. So that's coming back over here. Which means there's no... There's no swimmers left on the map actually, which means that kind of becomes like a zombie species. It's not going to do anything. Now we could go here. We've got three dispersal points, remember, two plus the number of cues, so we can move one, one, to, one more to cross the mountains, that's two, three. So we could move in here, but we can actually move from this one now. We can daisy chain from here. So that would be one, uh, two into here. And then we could move beyond if there weren't mountains. And we could try and fly here, but I don't think we do. We've got some work to do here, so let's knock this one off. We lose this contest, remember, we go in as herbivore. They've got more greens than us, so we go up here. We got, we're got the stronger carnivore, we got red versus zero over there. So this guy can swarm. It's going to move over here. No, it can't move here. This is not a suitable food, so this is going to zombie. We've done the same to them as well, and they've lost two more points. If we go in here, we could carnivore off this. But um, I might just go in here. No, we can't carnivore on this because this is not a solid food type. So I'm going to go in here. And now I'm up to six points because I've got three more creepers on the map. Right, so we've closed the gap down a little bit. It's nine versus six now. This is better. So populating is good, but I feel like we need to speciate in order to survive. Okay, back to him. Oh, do you know what? We forgot to do this. Oh, let's hope there's no event under here. No, we're okay. <laughs> I thought I'd have to unwound all that, but no, we're good. All right, phasing species. Five, five, six here. Five here, so this is the phasing species. 
Well, they speciate. Let's do the roll first. So, ooh, higher than a four to speciate. It's a four, so they're not going to. So they're going to look for you know, yellow and red. They're looking in the market. The cheapest card they can stick on. So red head's no good. Uh, yellow tail, red tail. Yep, they can do this one. So that's coming in for the red cube. Instant promotes. Um, oh no, they can't take that. That's a that's a new species. Sorry, unwind, unwind. Go back, look again. So they can't take either of these. Red heads, no good. Right, they'll take this one. No, oh, even stronger. Yeah, they can take this. They can take this. So red cube. Camouflage is so a pigmentation, so that becomes basil. They instant promote. This goes on here. Okay, so they've got another thorax. Red to red. This little insect's getting longer and weird looking. Two red cubes, right? This is a really strong predator now. Right, so they really have fought back. Because this has got one, two three red organs now. Well, they've just mutated into and promoted into a very strong predatory dragonfly. Okay, let's refresh. And we have an event. Most pheromones, they're getting on a fossil for another point. Uh, Craton number seven doesn't exist. And then the next bit is a yellow flower. This is angiosperm revolution. One flower is placed in every swamp biome that doesn't have a flower. So swamps get flowers. That only helps him because he's got lots of yellow cubes. So one there, one there, every swamp, one there. Okay, there's three of them. All right, back to us. So the scores have tightened up, it's us to play, and we've got some work to do.